Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel today. My name is Carly and today we're kind of kicking off a new segment, a new, a new type of video that I'm gonna be doing over here on the channel. The title of this video is Five Games, One Publisher. And what I'm gonna be doing with this segment is I'm going to be taking publishers, kind of like big name publishers within the board game industry, take a handful of their games and organize them and kind of break them down a little bit and rank them in the order that I would prefer them. Within the board gaming industry, we're always hearing about top 10 lists, you know, top 100 lists, but I thought it would be interesting to kind of take a more in-depth look publisher by publisher and how I personally would rank their games. So that's kind of what this segment is going to be about. And we're starting off this segment with a port with a board game company that I personally just adore. I love this company, um, but this company is Allplay. Now, if you're familiar with All Play games, this kind of won't be anything new to you, but All Play is interesting because All Play has a bunch of games under their belt, obviously, but they actually have games kind of designated into different segments. So they have their big box games and then their small box games, and they're even coming out with their like mini, mini games, which I believe are more like card games. Um, so that's kind of a new line that All Play is gonna be coming out with. But what makes this interesting is all of their games are the same size, so this kind Kind of big box line of theirs they're all this same kind of dimension and so it makes storing all play games actually really nice and easy because you know that they're all going to be this size I mentioned that Allplay has a lot of games under their belt, and they do. I have a lot of Allplay games. These are the five big box games that I personally have, but I also have a handful of their small box games. So I think I'm gonna be doing this video a couple times for Allplay, <laughs> and I might even do it in the future because I know that like those games that are set to come out this year and even into next year, I think, that I am very much looking forward to. Like I want to get so many of these Allplay games. Like I know Message from the Stars is being highly rated right now. Um, through the desert. I know that's an older game, but I actually have not played that one. Switchbacks, Lore, like there's so many of these games that are going to be coming out soon that I really want to get my hands on. So I might just kind of keep the series going specifically with All Play. Um, but right now, this is going to be, this video is going to be um, five big box games from All Play and how I personally would rank them. Now, all these games are games that are in my own personal collection, so I enjoy every one of these games. As I'm ranking them, I don't want you to think, oh, this game she rated, she put like fifth in, play, in fifth place, that means she doesn't like it. No, I really enjoy and like all of these games, but again, if I had to rank them, this is the way that I would personally go about ranking them. If you personally have a bunch of all play games in your collection or enjoy all play games, please let me know in the comments below what your personal favorite all play game is. But without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into this list. So the game that I decided to slot into number five <laughs> is going to be Kabuto Sumo. So Kabuto Sumo is a game that is designed by Tony Miller and, and the artwork was done by Quanchi Moria. This is a game that our kids absolutely love. We love playing this game with our kids. So in Kabuto Sumo, you have this big like disc, basically that's set in the middle of the table and you're, you have bugs and other discs that are on top of it. And on your turn, you will be sliding pieces onto this disc in the hopes of pushing your opponent's bug off the table. I mentioned before how our family loves this. I think this is just such a fun kids game. Um, these little pieces are just so fun and tactile and you have that tactile um, that tactile nature of you know trying to push something in a certain way and if it goes the right way like, can you knock my bug off um, before before I can knock yours off. I love the little like bugs that come with it too like you actually take on the role of a character kind of um, but it kind of gives you different shapes that other people are on the table or you, you have access to different shapes that other people don't have um, and it's it's just fun and there's I feel like there's like there's an easy way to play it which makes it good for kids and then there's a way that makes it a little bit more complicated for adults. Having said that, I do, the reason why I am ranking this the lowest is because this is a game that I am happy to take out with my kids. We play this game a lot, super fun. I don't know if I would want to play this with like an adult setting personally. Um, it doesn't, I don't know, again, it's fun. It's, I don't, I'm not a huge fan of dexterity games anyways. 
Um, but with my kids, I enjoy them because it helps kind of keep them involved and it's much, it's, mu it's much more fun for kids to have a dexterity game than like trying to deal with the cards in your hands, at least for my kids. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, so I really enjoy Kabuto Sumo. I love Quan Chi um, Mora's artwork. I think the most recent game he's done was Apiary. I might be wrong, um, but I'm, I think this is my favorite. Is In Kabuto Sumo, I think this is my favorite of his art, art pieces. Um, I just love the vibe in this game. Uh, so yeah, so Kabuto Sumo, great game. Definitely check it out. I think personally, I would recommend it to you if you have kids. But I don't know, if you really like de dexterity games, then this might be one worth looking into as well. So this is Kabuto Sumo. Now, when I first made this list, my first and second, and then my fifth ones, I was like, oh yeah, like they, those definitely belong there. My third and fourth, I feel like you could flip-flop these. <laughs> I, I don't know. I still don't really know if I'm happy with where I landed on them, but that's okay. So in fourth place, I am putting Pollen. So Pollen is a game, oh, upside down, Pollen. <laughs> Pollen is a game by Reiner Knizia and it is, um, the art is done by Beth Sobel. Now in Pollen, you it is basically a tile placement game. So you have kind of paper tiles in your hand and you're adding them to the board, but where you're actually centering them around are these little acrylic, um, acrylic bug pieces you whoever everybody who has this game honestly should have these acrylic pieces I think I wish that these would have come in the base game I know it would have made the game more expensive so I understand why they didn't but these pieces really make the game so much better so you have these little bug pieces that are on the table and you're again placing tiles around them and whoever has like the majority of that particular bug once this circle is completely enclosed then you then win that bug piece um, it's such a fun little puzzle it's fun because sometimes you purposely place a tile like it's fun when you're able to place a tile that works for two separate bug pieces especially those high point ones um and it's it's it, i don't know it's just fun it's tactile my kids really like this one um especially addy we we play this one actually pretty pretty often with her because she loves collecting the bugs and especially the butterflies. She always tries to go for the butterflies. Um, but it's, yeah, it's just a fun, quick playing tile placement game. And it actually really surprised me how much I like this. We've had this game for a while and it was only fairly recently that we started diving into it. And I was like, okay, this one like is really, really good. Um, so yeah, so I really um, enjoy Pollen. The only reason why it's coming in fourth for me is because I think the game that's next on the list, I think I enjoy the puzzle a little bit more. So Pollen is coming in at number four, or number four, right? And then number three is going to be Habitats. So Habitats is a game that is designed by Connie Cor Corny Van Morsel, and then the art is done by Dominique Ramsey and Daniel Prophet. In Habitats, the reason why I'm putting Habitats above Pollen is because I enjoy this puzzle a little bit more. It's a little bit more thinky. And so in Habitats, you are collecting tiles, adding them to your own personal kind of like tile, um, puzzle in front of you trying to create the most um, pleasing animal park wildlife park in Africa I really like the puzzle in this game though because you have a little safari cart and you're moving one tile at a time collecting that tile and adding it again adding it in front of you and it's interesting because a lot of the tiles that you're choosing are animal pieces and in order to complete them you need certain types of habitats either right like right beside or adjacent to where that animal is located um and so it it's really thinking again it's it's very similar to pollen in regards to it's a tile laying game but it's it's almost like a more thinky version of pollen which is why i think i prefer it a little bit more i will say that in the game you're not thinking you can't really think too far ahead you're not really planning out your moves because you can only move your jeep one space at a time and so if you are trying to go in a specific direction to get a certain tile i mean it's it's very likely that somebody else could grab it before you get it so you really have to just kind of see where your jeep is at the beginning of your turn and the tiles that are available for you and just make the best decision so you don't think too far ahead having said that it does it does work really well personally i really enjoy 
the way that you go about collecting the tiles and specifically the scoring. The scoring was really interesting in this game. I also really like how there are mid-game goals that you're trying to go for too. So it's not just trying to, you know, hit the end game. There are certain goals and objectives that after a certain amount of rounds, you go ahead and you score up. So I like, I like that too. Again, it gave you something else additional to work on. It wasn't a ton of extra points, but just having that that additional thing to work towards, I really appreciate it. So if you like tile placement games, then I, th I think these two are great options from all play. Again, I think Pollen would be a more simpler version and then Habitat's a little bit more, a little bit more complex. Um, so because this one is a little bit more complex, I am rating it a little bit higher because I find myself kind of drawn a little bit more towards the puzzle in Habitats than in Pollen. So the next game is one that honestly, it really surprised. I, I was surprised at how much I enjoyed this game, <laughs> honestly. Um, but this game is On Tour. On Tour is designed by Chad D Dishon, I think, and the art by Annika Gavril. So On Tour, I really, really like this game. It's a roll and write game where you basically are a band and you are planning out your path and where you're going to be performing. And the way you go about doing that is you have a map. So you have an American map and also a European map and you'll be rolling dice and then those whatever numbers that those dice are producing, you have to add them to the map. And once your map is completely full, then you will start with your lowest number and go through connecting in chronological order um, your timeline and you're trying to be the one that has the furthest or the longest root, right? It is so much fun. I love this game. I take this game out and play it solo. I mean, probably once a month I take this game out and play it solo because I love it that much. It's interesting because you have to be really strategic because you're kind of betting against the dice really is what you're doing is you're betting against the dice when you're placing your numbers, um, especially when you have numbers that are, they seem really close. Should I put them right by each other in the hopes that the dice doesn't roll or should I give them a little bit of space just in case I happen to get numbers that are even closer together. <laughs> it's really engaging, it's really fun. This is one that, again, because it's a roll and write, plays great with a lot of people. I will say that at the beginning, because I think that second half of the game is a little bit more interesting than the first half, because the second half, you have a lot of that tension, right? Because a lot of your board is filled up, and so you're trying your best to place and you have a direction, like you know where the your longest path is and so you're trying your best to complete it. Whereas at the beginning, the board is so open, you don't really kind of have an idea of where to go or where best would, pl would place that number. So I do think that the second half of the game is stronger than the first half, but it is still an enjoyable game and it is still one that, again, I'm always happy to dive into. I always wanna play. Um, and I like how it comes with two different boards. Again, it's not, really that different but because I guess with America I usually just kind of do this right like I start in Florida I try to go all the way around going up to the northeast the European board is laid out a little bit different so you kind of have to be a little bit more um a little bit more kind of like this with your with your map almost <laughs> but yes on tour great game highly recommend it um so that is why on tour um would be put number two on this list and if you watch my videos, pay attention to my channel, should be no surprise what my number one is. <laughs> but my number one is River Valley Glassworks. Now I know, I know, this game is not officially out yet. This is a prototype. However, having said that, River Valley Glassworks is out on BGA. So if you wanna play this game, all you have to do is go over onto BGA and you're able to play it. So because it is out on BGA, I felt like, I felt justified in adding it to this list. But River Valley Glassworks is a game designed by Adam Hill, Ben Pitchback, Matt Riddle, and then the art is done by none other than the amazing Andrew Bosley. Um, River Valley Glassworks is one that the first time I played it, I was like, you know what? I like this game. It's good. I think it's fine. But the more I dive into it, like I, I am obsessed with this game. I love this game. On, this game has replaced, if you watched, um, I think it was my cooling video where I talked about this, River Valley Glassworks has replaced Azul for me in my collection. I love River Valley Glassworks. So in this game, you're taking on the role of a character and you are going to the river, collecting sea glass, hoping to add it to your shop to sell it for the most price, I think. Um, but what you're going to be doing is you have sea glass in your hand, which then you add to the river. I think it's called river glass, but basically it's sea glass. Add it to the river and then you will 
pull glass from an adjacent tile. That glass that you pull gets added to your board and you'll be adding glass to your board from left to right in columns based by color. And once somebody has 17 pieces, placed onto their board that's what triggers the end of the game and you go through and you score up your again your columns and then also your rows and what makes it interesting is the based on based on where you place your glass in your row because you're slowly building out your glass right well all the points are inevitably at the end of the board so you really have to be strategic about the way that you're pulling glass and also setting yourself up for the future so when i am pulling glass or when i'm placing glass onto the river i'm trying to place certain colors that could potentially benefit me more at a future turn if i'm able to collect that glass then later um it's just it's such a fun puzzle we love it so much i'm obsessed with the theming obviously but the puzzle itself is so much fun and i love the way that the river flows so once uh, once somebody has collected glass from a piece that piece is now empty and so when so now it obviously has to be refilled but you don't just refill it normally you actually physically pick up the river tile put it to the back push it down and so the entire river and the entire board changes as you flow this river down when you are restocking every single piece. And it's it's such a fun board to work with. At first I was like, uh, it makes it kind of hard to plan, but the more I play it, the more I just fall in love with this flowing the river down mechanism and trying your best to work around the flow of the river. Like it's, it is honestly, it is so much fun. I just, I love this game. I cannot speak highly enough about it. Again, this is a prototype copy that I'll play was kind enough to send over, but I am anxiously, I'm just holding on to this until I can get my finalized copy of the game with the real glass and the acrylic pieces. Cause in the upgraded version of the game, it's a mat that um, that's out on the table and then the river pieces are acrylic so as you're flowing the river down you don't there's not a break in artwork basically that it'll just look like the river is flowing the glass down like i am so obsessed i love this game this is honestly a game that is one of the fav my favorite games that i've played this year so far so this i'm sure i will i will continue to talk about this game because i love it holds a very special place in my heart now so because of that River Valley Glassworks has to be on the very top of the list here. All right, so that was my ranking of five big box all play games. Again, we have R River Valley Glassworks in first, Entour on second, Habitats in third, Pollen in fourth, and then Kombuto Sumo in fifth. Again, I wanna reiterate that I love all of these games. All these games are not going anywhere in my collection, um, but if you have not really heard of All Play at all or haven't heard of these games, definitely look into these if any of these look interesting or sound interesting to you because these are all some that I would recommend and I think that they're all great and fantastic games. Games. Again, Allplay has a lot of games, so I am probably going to do a handful more of these videos specifically with Allplay, but I know like as I'm going through my collection, I know I have a lot of games from specific publishers, so I will continue to do this series and if there's any series or any publishers that you personally would like to hear my advice on or games that I would rank based on the games that they produce, let me know in the comments below and I will try to get to them as quickly as I can. I hope you enjoyed listening to this new segment today. If you enjoyed this video and you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, it means so much if you could do that. It really helps support me in everything that we're doing over here. But until next time, I hope you have a great rest of your day and we'll see you later.